Hello and welcome. So I wanted to update you guys on what's been happening in my life lately because it's been a while since I've made a uh, blog and uh, just to talk about everything I'm doing online and things are happening in my personal life and stuff like that. So hello, excuse the massive spot on my cheek, it's, you know, try not to stare at it the whole time. Now, anyway, um, as some of you guys may know, I am now a full partner on Twitch. Now, um, I'm happy about it. My whole live stream's happy about it. But I wanted to explain why I decided to leave YouTube gaming. So, as you guys know, actually, let's just start from the beginning. So, two years ago, during early 2015, I was streaming on Twitch before YouTube gaming even existed. And what happened back then was it, the stream was going well and back then there wasn't many 14 casters who were known so maybe three four at the very most and um my stream was growing and growing and growing and growing in fact I'll, i'm gonna link you guys my social blade uh for twitch at that time and you'll see around that time the sort of huge spike in viewership now what happened was i applied for partnership back then two years ago something like eight nine times and every single time it was an automatic no and there wasn't even a reason why it was just no 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 so and even when at the time i was getting sometimes 200 sometimes 300 concurrent as in like more than what i get now even and um i gave up i literally just gave up so I gave up on the streaming on Twitch, I gave up on Twitch completely, and I came over to uh, YouTube. And because, you know, they say, oh, just keep working at it, you would have got it eventually. But I just, maybe I'm impatient, maybe I'm whatever. Like, simply, you know, I've always felt that going for it was a distraction. You know what I mean? Because my whole purpose and everything I do online is to make good content for you guys. And that's it. Is not to get partnerships with companies and strike deals with this business and do whatever. It's not that. You know, it's like I don't do this full time. I do this for a hobby. So, um, because I do have a full time job, I work, you know, nearly 40 hours a week and then do this. So, you know, um, I really don't have time for that. You know, it's not my lifeblood what I do online. I do it because I love doing it. I enjoy doing it. So I came over to YouTube before I knew, uh, before YouTube gaming was going to like even be announced because basically all I had heard in the rumors was that they were revamping the live streaming service. I had no idea it was going to be gaming focused. And part of my motivation to moving to YouTube gaming back then was a number of things. There's some advantages YouTube has, which they still have. For example, I'm a YouTuber. You know, I've got more than 15, 1600 videos on my channel, more than nearly 33,000 subscribers, more than 6 million views. So, guys, thank you for that. <laughs> Jesus. But um, one advantage here simply is that when you live stream on YouTube, it backs up the video forever, which is great. And also, um, initially, while it wasn't true, they changed it so that each live stream retains its views. And um, we did have some really, really great live streams on youtube so for example when final fantasy 15 came out um i at one point was getting two 2500 concurrents on youtube which was just completely nuts and i haven't seen figures like that since and uh, but there were some things for that like back then we were all doing something what was called the ps4 trick so what that basically meant was is that you would start the live stream using your ps4 then you would be able to on youtube find the stream key it's like you know because if you don't live streaming it's on you know that you need the stream key to connect to the server and what you would then do you would copy that stream key into xsplit obs whatever your streaming software is and then you would disconnect your playstation 4 on purpose like you pull out the cable whatever you would then rebroadcast using XSplit or OBS and so on. And what that would then do is it would stream to YouTube or, you know, YouTube gaming and so on. But it would also stream directly to the PlayStation Network as well. Except the difference was 
you had a customized in interface, which gave you a huge, huge advantage over people who would just directly stream on PS4 without any interface and so on. Or with the standard, you, you probably have seen the standard PlayStation 4 interface. So, um, and that was great, you know, and, you know, it wasn't just me, regardless of what people might tell you, most YouTubers at the time were doing it, you know, regardless what tricks or lies or whatever they'll tell you, that's what they were doing to boost their numbers. And um, some people weren't, but they did regret not doing it because they missed out on the traffic, basically. But um, one, one thing is, is that a year passed with YouTube gaming and we barely got any new features it launched it was great as a launch platform as a brand new baby platform but it's it's basically stood still so, you know that that was part of the i started my brain started filling with doubt as time went on so they have released a much better chat compared to when they first launched they fixed the um they added categories so you can put the video into gaming category and then select which game so you can organize your stream into proper games and um so on and you also retain the views on the videos on the vods and so on and because i do sometimes some excessive live streams um i find that found out that basically apparently youtube is limited to 12 hour videos who knew or like i guess one i'll be the only person one of the few people that would know that because i can stream more than 12 hours at a time and um now the issues i had with it and again filled me with doubt even from day one was your profile on youtube gaming encourages you to leave the channel <laughs> so it, it points out other people playing the same game and other vods related to the same game not all made by you so most of the profile on youtube gaming tells you to leave the streamer which we highlighted to youtube over and over and over and over again over and over and over again and it's still exactly the same as it was more than a year ago and you know um what was the sort of final nail in the coffin for me personally was when the adpocalypse happened so what happened was basically is that um pewdiepie started some uh fight well he didn't really start a fight he was sort of aggroed by um a media outlet i won't say their name i won't give them any like feet like any publicity on my channel and um rather than sue them for slander or whatever he just said you know come on then mother effers you know like um see what see what else you can do you know what i mean it's like because what that ended up resulting for him is um that he lost partnerships with disney with youtube he had um his season two of scared pewdiepie was cancelled and blah 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 now what ended up happening after that is said media outlet went to the advertisers of youtube and said oh look um random advertiser there is ads your ads appearing on horrible videos on youtube so what ended up happening is that something a lot of advertisers pulled their ads from youtube and they said we won't put our ads back on youtube until you fix whatever that you know you know we don't basically want our ads appearing on bad videos you know so i personally saw my ad revenue on youtube drop 80 percent overnight so like i went from maybe three or four hundred bucks a month to less than a hundred even though my views was actually going up so that's the thing at the time my viewership was going up and the ad revenue poof, like literally to nothing so for me that was a final nail in the coffin so um i decided to try twitch out again but it was a trial it was kind of like okay we'll try twitch if it doesn't work out then maybe we can try beam or we can try or it's called beam now it's called mixer and or hitbox and so on so but i was starting to look for alternatives now the advantages on twitch is that one i already had a channel i already have a channel on twitch i've got nearly five thousand followers so it was nice to bring that back uh to life um also as well um the one of the advantages is is that there's a lot of now compared to back then as well there is a ton of like final fantasy 14 casters on twitch so it was easy to recapture a 14 audience on twitch it's not my intended game forever i'm not you know as much as content i make on youtube i'm not a 14 youtuber i'm not a 14 caster i'm just a gamer 
Like, 14 obviously is a game I cover the most, but it's not a game I'm going to be covering forever. You know, it's like MMOs have a limited lifespan. And so if you go to Mifri.com, you can see all the games I've, you know, played lately and so many more games I'm intending to play in the future. Now, um, one thing I really, really love on Twitch are the chat options. I always thought, even back when I was, you know, frustrated with Twitch and the partnership system and I was moving to YouTube gaming I actually remember one time doing let's say YouTube streams but trying to use a Twitch chat because I always thought that the chat on Twitch was better because of the smileys and the all the bot integration and so on now they have added you know bots to YouTube but they're nowhere near as good or as responsive as they are on Twitch so and um, one thing I brought into the stream after seeing it in someone else's stream, I started doing research into what are people doing to attract and bring fun and interactivity to their own live streams, is I discovered a bot called DeepBot. So I was looking, because some people were doing it for a while, like people were using Revlo before it got shut down and so on as well, for tra tracking points essentially which is simply like loyalty points the more you watch the live stream the more points you earn i wanted a tracking system like that because i know that there is a section of my audience that are there all day every day on my live stream so i wanted to reward them so i installed DeepBot, and every minute they're now everyone in the stream is earning one mifri point that's what i call them or mp because you're not rpg and so on and um like and it's been going really well so what we use the mp for on the chat is for raffle tickets and then i give away prizes from the mog station of final fantasy 14 and stuff like that but people buy raffle tickets using mp so basically they're literally spending the points that they've earned by watching the stream to have a chance to win prizes you know so it's like loyalty um, reward to the extreme it's like I, I think it's a very good idea, basically. Now, like I said, because this is a hobby for me, I can afford to do that. You know, I can afford to make that, let's say, investment. Because I knew very full well that it would pay off in the long run. Now, the cynical people might think, oh, look, he bought his viewers. It's like, hell no. I reviewed loyalty. It's like, no one has forced or told the people in my live stream to watch me for 200 hours straight. They chose to do that, so and I wanted to reward them for doing that. And um, what one? So I went back to Twitch. That was about two months ago now, and literally a week after I started back on Twitch, I actually sent a tweet to Twitch support, and I said, which was raising a topic which I raised like two years ago. I said, why doesn't everyone have like sub buttons? You know, you would make lots more money, and you know. Um, people would be happy, streamers would be happy, and so on and so on and so on. And they replied back saying, no, you know, we have the partnership program and so on. But, of course, they weren't able to tell me. Like, two days later, they announced the Twitch affiliate scheme. And I think the Twitch affiliate scheme is one of the best features Twitch has released, other than Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime is out absolutely the best, but um, affiliates is wonderful. So now there's more than 60,000 affiliates on Twitch who have the ability to have most of the features partners have like nearly all of them to be honest you know, like there's in a lot of cases it's hard to distinguish between the two and in order to qualify for affiliate you need to have at least three concurrence to your live streams and have uh, i think 50 followers and have streamed at least seven times in a month you know so as any any casual streamer should be able to achieve that quite simply and um i think it's a great great system you know it's like and it's something literally i've been dying and crying and you know begging for for more than two years i'm really really happy they brought it in now for me because i was doing well, I, I have been doing my stream the way i've been doing it um i have been getting between 80 to 150 to sometimes 200 concurrence currently rarely above 150 though but consistently over a hundred and um because of that i thought why not let's apply for partnership again let's see how it goes so initially the first time i applied like maybe two months ago they said no uh, but they said please try again in two weeks now one thing i've learned in my time is um it's a lot easier and a lot better for yourself 
if you talk to the staff of the companies, YouTube staff, Twitch staff, whatever. Like for example, you might notice on my YouTube channel that I've got the verified tick, even though I've, I've got barely over 30,000 subscribers. And I've had the verified tick for a very, very long time now. These days, if you're new on YouTube, you will not even be able to apply for, for verified tick unless you have 100 subscribers. And the reason I was able to get it is because I was talking actively to the YouTube staff. So, and uh, one of them managed to get it for me simple as that so um i'm not saying that talk to twitch staff and you'll get partnership definitely no but having that extra someone on the staff who can effectively back you up give you more insight give you more advice into what you might want to do is a huge advantage so that you're not aiming blindly you know towards it so um two weeks passed i applied again for partnership but then it was exactly when E3 happened, so they were incredibly busy. So a week went by, two weeks went by, no answer. And then after two weeks, then they sent me a, res a response saying, oh, to progress or process your application, we need personal information from you, like name, address, phone number, stuff like that. So I was like, ooh, that's an answer I've never seen before. So I was like, okay, positive, positive sign, but again, didn't hear anything for another one like week and you can imagine when you're waiting for something one week feels like an absolute lifetime so but finally something like three weeks later after i put in the initial application they said your application has been accepted i was like yeah so and then within a week i got my paperwork i signed the contract and so on and now fully partnered with twitch and for me personally I'm very happy about it because um, when it comes to like, so we spent a while talking about YouTube. Okay. So my final notes for YouTube would be things that YouTube need to improve. One, reduce reliance on ads. YouTube, please, if you're watching, for the love of God, release YouTube Red worldwide. Just stop delaying it. You know, and it's like if there's any um, issues, if there's any um, legalities, whatever, sort them out. Get YouTube Red everywhere you know release that then also um add incentives to youtube red for example we have on youtube gaming there's the sponsor button which is equivalent to the subscribe button on twitch release that you know they were saying they they might want to release it to everyone eventually just the way like affiliates have released sub buttons to everyone do it do it what's stopping you and then the other uh, one is revamp the front page of YouTube Gaming to only be live streams. That's it, only live streams. So you have the home tab, which has got live and videos, and you have the live tab, which is the live streams. Make the live tab the home page of YouTube Gaming and make it easier to browse through the games because at the moment it's designed or as an, it looks like what you would see on an app, for example, but on a website. So when you look at it on a big screen, like I've got these like 24 inch screens in front of me, it actually looks ridiculous. So like having a good interface to easily browse through games, through live streamers and so on, on the front page would be great. Also as well, from each individual profile of YouTube gaming, remove all of the please visit other people elements. <laughs> you know, it's like, because it's not fair it's not fair to the streamers when your the system itself is encouraging people to leave essentially but yeah but that's all i'll say about youtube gaming for now you know i'm not you know i think it has a lot of potential for the future i'm just done waiting i've waited more than a year i'm not gonna wait anymore i'm sorry you know i'm mortal like there's you know there's only so long i'm gonna live before you know I'm, i feel like i'm waiting for nothing and um, as well, now, when it comes to Twitch features, if we do a direct comparison, Twitch has got Twitch Prime. If you don't know what it is, let's do the standard thing that we talk about all the time. If you have Amazon Prime, which I personally have, and I've had it for years because it's beautiful. What you know, what Twitch, what Amazon Prime allows you to do is get free next day delivery on all your orders from Amazon. I pretty much order everything from Amazon. Like the only thing I don't order from Amazon is my food because I go next door to the supermarket and just buy it. Um, but even then, 
Amazon now has got Amazon Fresh or whatever in the UK, which is will deliver food if I become that lazy, I can't even go next door. And what um, Amazon Prime does, it also gives you streaming movies, it gives you streaming music, it gives you can read books and magazines and all this other stuff. Now, um, what it does is if you have Amazon Prime, you automatically have Twitch Prime. What Twitch Prime is, is the equivalent of Twitch Boost. So if you link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you can then watch Twitch with no ads completely on every single channel. So you don't even have to sub to people to remove ads. Every single channel, remove ads completely. And you also get a little uh, blue badge next to your name to show you're a Prime user. And on top of all of that, you can also um, subscribe to one streamer a month for free. But that streamer will still get the money as if you subscribed with a $5 sub. So, like I said, that's why I believe Twitch Prime is the best feature Twitch has ever released. And also as well, Twitch has released things like um, the, uh, the refining and still working on their video side. So obviously, YouTube is way superior on the video content than Twitch. You know, that at this point no contest but at least they're working on it they're working to improve it also as well twitch has got much better chat options the ability to add custom smileys even to affiliates even if it's only a couple for affiliates like you can add custom smileys um, as you grow your channel and then partners can earn the right to, to add up to 50 but uh, it's ridiculous. So if you want to get 50, though, you have to have like 7,000 subscribers or something ridiculous like that. But I personally, I can already have like nine custom emotes and I've already used all the slots. I've got a few more emotes waiting to be added when we get more subscribers. And um, now the difference is with those emotes, you can use them site wide, you know, so that's the point. Uh, that's why they're so good so for example i can go into and i have been going into any of all of my friends streams and then using my own emotes because it's great you know it's sort of like just because you know some of my emotes are silly and funny and so on and it's nice being able to use them everywhere not just in my own stream and um also as well they keep releasing new features you know they're saying uh, we're working like I don't know if any of you guys are watching games on quick right now But they've added a, an integrated timetable to the game You can also and what you could always do you could integrate um, Or change the profile so you can put in your different images or information under your profile they added in the um, Community posts so you can have almost a third of your profile like, as a as a column of news like you just post different bits of news onto your profile on but it encourages you to stay there you know there isn't any part of any twitch profile which says leave effectively once you're there it's you're looking at the streamers world essentially and the streamers put in a lot of love and a lot of effort into making their their channel as pretty as possible i do respect a lot of the work that the other streamers have done and also as well when the, when they have gatherings and meetups and events and so on um like for example even at e3 they had a partner lounge so which means that if you were at e3 this year and you're a partner on twitch you could go in and hang out with other partners so they actually like book like section off a, a little area or you know book the rooms or second area of e3 to allow partners to do that and then uh, we have twitchcon coming up and so on now i personally i don't really ever go to these sort of events because i have travel anxiety and i'm also incredibly broke so i won't go to these events but the fact that they're available is great for everyone involved basically and um they also have the prime loot drops every week every month so if you have a prime account then you get you see codes i think this month is codes for like overwatch um loot boxes and add-ons for players unknown battlegrounds and stuff like that and some, sometimes they outright just give you free games you know so um what i've said the way i've sort of described it before is that if effectively youtube gaming is crawling in a race where twitch is sprinting and they will never catch up unless they do something about it now i do have faith that youtube gaming will eventually be something it's backed by youtube and google for goodness sake so they've got in a way unlimited resources but of course they have other things to worry about they obviously have to worry about the main youtube website first before youtube gaming 
but that is also the part of the problem in my opinion because it means that my like my personal priority is gaming so um i want to be on a platform where the platform itself their priority is what i do and that's what twitch is twitch is a gaming platform which also does creative and artwork and so on but it's primarily focused on games and you know now that i'm a full partner on twitch i don't have to worry about earning partnership i've got it and then it's a case of what can i do to improve the stream so things that i want to do for example i want to revamp the profile I keep working on it like you for anyone who's been watching me for a while you probably see i'm always changing the artwork even on youtube as well so youtube and twitch i'm trying to make better artwork and you know make it look better and so on and then the stream layout itself you know i'm not 100 percent happy with how the stream looks right now so i might find even another ui developer so i'm always trying to experiment with how the stream looks and so on i don't think i'll ever be happy to be perfectly honest but um it's the advice i do give to other streamers and other casters is the idea of never settle always try to be better than before always try to excel always try and take a step forward in what you do and um yeah and all i can say at this point is is you know thank you to google and youtube for you know for your effort you know youtube gaming is still very young but as i say they have to speed up otherwise they, it will just become a dead dead site in my opinion it will just become forgotten and um like i know me personally i'm one of of just the youtubers i know i'm one of five youtubers who have now moved over to streaming on twitch you know i so i know a few youtubers and so on and i am you know i am happy for the people still focusing and um you know working as hard as they can on youtube gaming but I'll be perfectly honest, um, I won't say exact numbers, but since I moved from uh, YouTube to Twitch, my income on Twitch is five times more than YouTube. Five times. Even though my audience on Twitch is probably a fifth of the size. So what is that, 25 times better? I don't even know how the mass, but basically, you know, there is in terms of if we talk about money i make way way more money on twitch because people can subscribe for free so a lot of my subscribers that i have already um since i got my sub button a couple of days ago are free twitch prime subs which is great and also as well bits now bits are like a currency on twitch which you can donate to the streamers but people have the ability to earn bits for free if they're in, for example, USA, I think. So what people, from what I've been told, what people can do in USA, and I don't know if it's available in other places, that they can purposely watch adverts and earn bits. And one bit is equivalent to one US cent to a streamer. And, um, you know, the amount, like I said, the amount of bits I've earned in the last two months has been more than four times the well it's been the equivalent of four months of youtube money i said i won't say exact numbers but that's how much and that's just in two months and that's with people just casually giving it that's with barely 100 to 150 concurrent so um what can i say and what i use the money for is i use it to improve the channel so you know artwork is not free um i need and my shopping list for this year, I want to buy a new graphics card because my 970s can't even run um, 14 anymore. I can't even run Stormblood at 60 FPS because I go to Kugane, I get 40 frames a second, <laughs> which is, um, I'm, I'm quite disappointed with that. But I do have a new graphics card in mind. I want to get the 1080 Ti. And the reason, it's kind of over the top for 14, obviously, but I want it to decimate any and all games for the next five years. And then I need to buy a new capture card and I'm going to be switching from Elgato to Ava Media because now two of my Elgatos are broken. And I don't have time for this. You know, it's like when I play games, I want to just play games. And it's the same issue I have with between YouTube and Twitch. It's the same thing I have with my hardware, myself. Is that I just want to play. I don't want any technical issues. I don't want, oh, the capture card is lagging or the internet is lagging or the this is lag or whatever. 
I just want to pick up the controller or play with the keyboard, whatever, and just have fun. You know, if I'm using my free time for this, this is what I want to do. I want to enjoy myself and in turn entertain you guys as well. And then other than that this year, the only other thing I want to buy is a third screen. But I don't think the first screen I want is even available yet. Because I want one of the 144Hz G-Sync HDR screens. So they have been invented, I just don't think they're widely available right now. So unless I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments down below if you watched the video to this point. So yeah, so going forward guys, I am streaming over on Twitch. So I am trying to make it as loud as possible that I'm doing that because I am at the moment getting anything from six to 8,000 views every single day here on this YouTube channel. And I have a lot of videos on the way. In fact, I've got a backlog of maybe 30, 40 videos to publish because I have been recording all of the job quest videos and so on. Now, if I actually quickly go into um, Final Fantasy 14, I want to show you the progress I've made since Stormblood launched. So I've got my monk to 70. And I'm working on Paladin right now. Paladin is, as you can see, halfway to 65. But then I've been working on all crafters and all gatherers at the same time. Now the difference is, I'm trying to do it in a way where I don't burn hundreds of millions of gil to do it. So since Stormblood launched, I've probably spent about 11 million. It's still a lot compared to what most players can afford. But to any person who is a full-time crafter or whatever or has been playing the game for a while 11 million is not much for the amount of progress I've made and um, obviously the advantage of doing this is that now even the simple items are selling for a quarter to half a million each so I'm fairly sure I'll be able to make all that money back very very quickly of course the prices on Sargatanis are quite high because of um, how old the server is it is actually a 1.0 legacy server and um, what I'm just going to keep doing every single day is I'm going to be doing dailies and stuff like that, recording all the job quests, videos, and so on and so on. So, um, and just keep going as it is. Now, one thing that um, I want to mention, because I have talked about it on the on the live stream, but I wanted to mention it here as well in this, in this blog, is that um, I will always take my time with the story. I will ab absorb every single word. I will read it all out. I'll watch all the cutscenes, I'll record it all, I'll put it on my YouTube channel and so on. Now the reasons I do that is one, because the story in 14 is flipping amazing, you know, so it's, it's a real shame to miss out on, on it. Also as well, because there is actually a section on this YouTube channel who don't actually play the game, but watch all my videos, you know, so there are some people who appreciate, I'm effectively playing the game for them, because that's a, that is what a Let's Play is, is that Effectively, just imagine that me and 33,000 other people are sitting on a massive couch and I'm the one with the controller. So, I don't think it would be very fun for all the people involved if all I'm doing is like, oh look, a cutscene, click, 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 skip cutscene, click, 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 skip cutscene, click, 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 done. You know what I mean? It's an RPG, like, it's a role-playing game. I'm playing the role of Mifri and, you know, I'm I'm loving it, you know. It's like I'm not a hardcore role player, so you know you won't see me fighting as a monk. It's like let me unleash my fury upon you. Of course not, but you know I do love RPGs. I love Final Fantasy and so on, and I've always loved it for the actual story itself. Is I'm not a speedrunner, not by any means, and um, I can understand people who want to be speedrunners and so on. There's a whole like you know games done quick. There's a whole community of. Uh, speedrunners but I am not one of those you know I, I take my time I want to get the most for my money when I play this game and um, because of that right now I'm falling behind in terms of everyone else so for example today Omega came out I'm not doing Omega and I probably won't be able to do it for at least another week or two also as well um, I'm not doing collectibles yet I will get around to collectibles but not yet when I get to 70, then I'll start making guides about collectible guides, uh, co yellow collectibles and so on. And, um, yeah, but I'm just living my life the way I want to live it, you know what I mean? So I go to work, I do my job, I then come home. If I have the energy, I'll live stream. And there has been times when I've been so exhausted where I just don't stream or I even if I think I can get through the stream, I'm so tired, I say sorry to the stream, I'm really tired, I will just come back the next day. And that's it casual fun I do this for the enjoyment and so on 
It's not my simply, it's not a case of, oh, I have to do this, otherwise I don't eat. Definitely no. And speaking of that, we have come a long way um, since uh, a year ago. So a year, last April, basically, I was kicked out of my parents' house because I refused to divulge my financial information. Uh, effectively, my father thought I had like 30 grand stashed away somewhere, and he wanted proof that I didn't have it. And I was saying, I said to him simply, no, you know, my word is enough. If that's not good enough, whatever. And so I got kicked out of my parents' house for not revealing my financial information. And uh, But one thing was, my pride and so on would, would say, like, look, when I can, I will pay the money back. And I have. So um, I might even link it in the description if I remember the video where I paid back all of the um, subscrip all of the borrowed money and I even added 20% on top as well so I paid all that back you know I'm definitely not out of my financial hole I'm still I still have debt I still have so many other things but I'm in a lot more control especially now that I've diversified my avenues my money making avenues so right now I've got my job I've got YouTube I've got Twitch I've got affiliate with WT Fast. I've got there's still people who subscribe to me on Game Wisp, but I don't think that's going to last much longer because people are moving from Game Wisp one to Twitch and so on. I can make like four dollars a month from Patreon, <laughs> but um, uh, Patreon is still there. You know, Patreon used to be great for me back in the day. Like at one point, I was making three hundred bucks a month from Patreon, but uh, people have moved on to other things and so on. Like I have so many other ways of um, being supported. And otherwise, I'm just doing what I love doing. And um, if there's anything I can do to make my channel better, in your opinion, and so on, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'll say this before some idiot does. Oh, yeah, you should just shut your channel down. It's like, yeah, no. So, um, basically, what can I say? I just wanted to share all of my feelings with you guys and so on. Like I said, Google, if you're watching... I hope my feedback to you is useful to you. I love you, YouTube. I love you, Google. Um, but please try harder. You know, please try harder. For one, for your own sake, and two, for the sake of every plat every single person who's dedicated to YouTube gaming and trying to make it into something. Also, to the people on uh, Twitch, I love you. And um, what can I say? I hope more people from uh, who watch my YouTube videos come over to my live streams on twitch because then you can ask me questions so maybe you've seen something in my videos you're not 100 percent sure about and you want to ask me ask me directly just ask me in the live stream even if i'm playing a non-game non-14 game or other game then just ask and I'll, I'll try and answer you as much as i can or at least i'll direct you to a video or something that might better answer your question and that's it so guys i could rant about this all day and you know i am capable of like i said live streaming for 12 hours a day and so on but I'll leave it there for now. So thank you very much. Remember to like, favor, and subscribe. I hope you liked the video. Keep the conversation going. Let me know in the comments down below any feedback, any suggestions, any thoughts, any anything. And um, I will see you in the next video or on Twitch. So thank you, guys. Love you all. And I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.